you could walk throughout the ship. Okay, so uh, go ahead and finish up with the. But you can be on both, and you, I mean, from a, from a lockdown standpoint, critical or not, yeah, because otherwise you would never have people on a boat ever between Friday night and Saturday night, right? You wouldn't have Passover cruises. There would have been no slaves in the United States. Okay, well, because in Russia's daughters, uh, they were talking about when they travel from town to town with the horses, you know, they have to change horses. Uh -huh. They always try to get there before the dark and spend, no matter how wet a place, spend the entire Shabbat there. Sure. Uh, so I kind of assume that in many ways just maybe they were paying for being there. Uh, but that's just the way they were. Because well, this, this obviously longer. predates uh, any of the Middle Ages, right? I mean, we're talking like Mishnah, yes, yes, yes. so we're talking 200. So they're thinking about what if you're on a ship? Right. It takes more than a week to get somewhere, so you better be able to get You've got to be able to, to at least in that fashion. So as long as they get in port before it's dark, so they can get off. At least according to, to the to yeah. one view. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, go ahead and if you want to pick up the last paragraph there. Boundaries through the sky. Wait, wait, I don't think we, we did the last paragraph of mission. Okay. On one occasion, they did not enter port until nightfall. On Friday, when the Sabbath had already commenced, they said to Rabban Gamliel, May we disembark? He said, You may. I was looking out and saw that we entered the boundary before dark. Okay, you, you're right. We did read it, but we didn't discuss it. Fair enough. Okay, so we entered the boundary before dark. What's he talking about? Before Shabbat, right? No. Okay, no, but what boundary? He's the, the Shabbos boundary. What's the Shabbos boundary? When Shabbos begins. Okay, we're not talking time. Talking we're we're talking actually time. some kind mm -hmm. of era. We entered the era, so a particular boundary. We entered the boundary before dark. So Rabbi Gabriel says you can't get off the boat because you entered it prior. You entered the era. So okay, we're are, assuming that mm -hmm. in this, wherever they were, whatever port, that there was some kind of era. We're not talking about time here. No, no this is not time. Space. Okay. We're talking about actually an arrow, like like as in a um, the the wires that go from one telephone pole to another telephone pole. Mm -hmm. At least that's how it's currently done. Okay. So there must have been an arrow wherever. Yes. Oh, it's an actual. That's okay. what they're talking okay. about. So. But if you weren't familiar with the uh, rules of that city. Then how would you know? Because harbor maybe was if you have a harbor defined by mm -hmm. some kind of stones or whatever a quiet okay. area, if you pass by the stones, like at this at that time they didn't have the they wire. wouldn't have had a wire on a telephone pole. Yeah. So arguably that they they knew the place yeah. that it would have an area. That people knew the place. I'm saying of course. Yeah. So they, they were going to a, an unusual port. Okay, that might be a different different issue. Okay, so Mike, do you want to pick up the The boundary to the sky. So now we're not going to just talk about water. We're talking about up. How far up do we have to worry about? I would assume heaven. Who die on Shabbat? Well, the soul doesn't leave the body to die on Shabbat. Really? You have to wait till after. No, actually, it leaves the body. And that, that's not. It, if, if you don't get buried, that's when the next guild will occurs, which is right. why we try to like do that. But it's not going to happen on Shabbos anyway. I mean, we we got to get to like this whole part about Elijah. So um, because after all, Elijah travels in a fiery chariot, which would be above you know normal okay boundaries of height. So Rav Kanania in, uh, inquired, do boundaries apply? In note number three. The standard Hebrew texts, uh, but there are several manuscripts and very. That, that's that's a different number three. Is oh, I'm literally, sorry. Are there literally, yeah, I'm sorry. Literally, boundaries should have cleaned the spot off my glasses. <laughs> <clears throat> Above the height mm -hmm. of ten palms, <clears throat> or do boundaries not apply to height above ten palms? So I'm assuming that trees. Uh -huh. 
<clears throat> you need not ask with reference to pillars uh, and columns high and four wide. <clears throat> For that is swelling of the ground. Or so, like the ground itself, it is subject to boundary rules. Now, I'll pose uh, the question rather than uh, rather with reference to the pillars of ten high, but less than four wide, or with reference to someone who leaps through the uh, through the air above ten palms. Alternatively, with reference to someone on a boat. Okay, and so and the footnote there says the boat deck is assumed to be more than ten palms above the solid ground. So, ma. Well, what is the answer? Uh, what is the answer, Rav? Uh, Roshaya. Except uh, there is a proof. Once uh, they were departing from whatever the... For to see the, the Roman port. Uh, with their ship out at sea. Now, if you say that the boundary applies to the height of ten palms, that is why uh, they wish to be stripped with themselves. But if the boundaries do not apply above the height of 10, why uh, do they wish uh, to be stripped with themselves, <coughs> seeing the whole question of boundaries that did not arise? Okay, so we're still working through this issue. Do you want to put that up there? Perhaps even as Rabbi said, in another context, the boat was in a shallow, so the deck was less than 10 pounds above solid ground. Here also, perhaps, there were many shallow sites. Rather, the law was commencing on the arrival in port, when they would have been in a shallow water. Here, they were openly swimming. This, so they saw the shallow water is lower in elevation than the high sea? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. In terms of how you know how tall a ship is, right? Exactly. And another proof. For one reason, they did not enter port until dark. Now, if you, you say the boundaries apply above a height of ten tons, that is all right. But if boundaries do not apply above a height of ten tons, what was the problem? Rava says it was moving in the shallow. So that the boundary laws apply. Okay. All right. So this next piece we're going to look at. Um, it's very interesting because they went from Sura to Pabedita. So let's look at. We're still on a question. I don't think we've exactly answered the question. What about if we're above the ground? Do we have the same two thousand cubit boundary or not? So they they haven't answered that question. But we're going to look at a different one. Different issues. So let's look at page 760, the map, map 2. So if you look at map 2, we're going to look at the distance between Sura and Pompadita. So Sura is kind of uh, about uh, a little over halfway down the page. And Pompadita is the, about the top city on the left. The road grade kilometers. Absolutely, over 80 kilometers, over 50 miles for sure, you know, probably closer to 90 or 100 miles. But Sura was the port. No, um, the, those, are, they were probably at a different place. We're not sure exactly where the port is. We're looking at a different issue okay. because they're, they're going from one place to the other to do classes, which I think this is just a very interesting uh, comment here. So... Here's one of the proof texts, or at least that's what they're calling it. And who's next? Me. A proof. Seven lessons were recited on the Sabbath morning in the presence of Rav Gupta at Sura, and late on the Sabbath afternoon in Rav's presence at Pamadita. Okay, so do you, now you see on the Sabbath morning, they were in Sura, and in the afternoon, they were in Pamadita. Who recited them? Was it not Elijah from which you can that boundaries do not apply above a height of 10 palms? Not necessarily. Perhaps the demon Joseph recited them. And then in 6 it said, Elijah would not most likely... He would have. He would most likely have traveled in his fiery chariot. 
2 Kings 2.11. The wall of ten spans high and was certainly not a contravene the Sabbath laws. Demons, on the other hand, are not Sabbath observers. Okay, so <laughs> who gave these lessons? Okay, we now know that it's going to be over our 2,000 cubits. So who gave these lessons? There were seven lessons recited on Shabbat morning in Surah and late in the afternoon. Okay, somebody was traveling pretty darn fast, among other things, right? Okay, so now we've got another proof. Go ahead. If someone says, I vow to be a Nazarite, Nazarite, on the day the son of David comes, he may drink wine on Sabbaths and festivals, but he is forbidden to drink wine on weekdays. Okay, so now why is this? He's going to do it whenever Moshiach comes. He's going to become a Nazarite, right? So, number seven there. Nazarites answer, abstain from, pardon me, Nazarites abstain from produce of the grave and from the contact of the dead and let their hair grow. Son of David is the Messiah, number six. Okay, so is, is someone who makes a vow, you know, they don't want to violate their vow, right? So we got to know when Moshiach comes. Right? And the question is going to be is can Moshiach come on Shabbat? Now, if you say that the boundaries apply above a height of 10 palms, that is why he would be permitted to drink wine, since the son of David would not arrive then as his journey would infringe the Sabbath. But if boundaries do not apply above a height of 10 palms, why should he be permitted, seeing that the son of David might arrive? Okay, now what, what did we just talk about? What did we just say? Apparently, in this particular situation, we're thinking somehow Moshiach is going to come maybe on Shabbat if he's traveling by air. Right? So, do we have these boundaries applying above this height or not? We're not sure. We're not, we haven't come to a complete conclusion. But it's interesting how they kind of get to their conclusions. It's interesting at the collection of issues that they're looking at, right? So we've got, we know that at one point, a long time ago, that there were lessons that were given in Surah and Pumbedita. Okay, how's that possible? They were done on Shabbat. Somebody was traveling pretty darn quick, among other things. Because it was a long ways to go, and in their time, how's that possible? If we have an accurate map of where these places really were, if it's Elijah, okay, then, then we know that boundaries don't apply in the air. But if it's a demon, okay, well, maybe they do apply because you, they're not subject to the, the 2,000 cubit issue. You do have a reference to the, the marriage. It's by day. It's from Jerusalem to the Tigris and Euphrates River. The upper, the, the boundary is you were allowed 15 days because they didn't start the prayers for rain. They didn't start prayers for rain. In terms of the pilgrims. Right. So for 15 days, so you could figure out... But you, but you don't know the people all left on the same day. That assumes that everybody was on the same day and is allowed 15 days mm -hmm. for point A to point B. The reason why they were allowed the two weeks is because the people staggered their leaving. Some people may tarry a little bit longer with friends in Jerusalem before they move on. So that's why we don't start the first rain, because people might be delayed in leaving the town. Yeah, they were allowed 15 days. So with that, you could roughly figure out the, the, the mileage that they traveled in 15 days, and you could figure out that. Well, you, that's still assuming that everybody left on the same day. No, you're assuming that, you know, I did, between the two cities, I didn't stop, stop for 20 days. Okay. Uh, okay, either way. Um, it, in terms of how long it took from one place to I mean, another. If it's a fair assumption to do it between Jerusalem and, and, and the rivers, then it's the people stopped for roughly different times. And it's a fair assumption that between the two cities there in... Uh, yeah, to get to go to Pontefina, hey, I might have stopped and talked to the farmer on the way. But in this case, we know that there was one lesson given to Moshiach that the farmer was allowed to go to Shabbat, and then they were given in the afternoon on Shabbat. Mm -hmm. So you've got a space of maybe six, eight hours. How did they get there? How did they get from one place to another? Which is why they're invoking Elijah or mm -hmm. this demon named Joseph. Because otherwise, there would be no way to make that travel time. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so moving um, yeah, on, they had to pick up the next section. Along the way, so it's and they Maybe that's it. Run it. That is for the different reasons Scripture says, Lo, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the coming of the awesome, fearful day of the Lord. And as Elijah didn't arrive the previous day, the son of David will not arrive today. The Sabbath, even if his journey is permissible. Okay, so now they're backing up and trying to figure out what day is it possible for Moshiach to come. Okay, Elijah has to precede it. So if we don't know that Elijah comes first in this particular situation, then we can assume that this would-be Nazarite can drink on Shabbat. Because we know that if Elijah doesn't come on Friday, then Moshiach can't come on Shabbat. But if so, he should be permitted to drink wine on any weekday, too, seeing that Elijah did not come the previous day. So we su assume that Elijah came, but the would-be Nazarite did not know about it, since Elijah presented himself only at the great court. Okay, so now this is how they're getting around the situation. So he right? can drink every day because he didn't know Elijah came. Except that that would be accurate if Elijah is only presenting himself at the great Sanhedrin. Then so why should this, the Sabbath be different? Elijah might have presented himself at the great court on Friday. Not so. Israel has already been assured that Elijah will not come on the eve of Sabbath or festival since it would be troublesome. And what a nice thing. We know that Elijah is just a very hospitable guy that is not going to infringe upon an entire nation's Shabbat preparations. Provided he's sober when he arrives. There's that. <laughs> okay, go ahead. This assumes that if Elijah wouldn't come on the eve of Sabbath or festival, the Messiah wouldn't come either. In that case, the intending Nazarite should be permitted to drink wine on Friday. Elijah wouldn't come on Friday, but Messiah might, since when Messiah comes, everyone will be Israel's servants and will undertake the Sabbath preparations for them, so his arrival would not be troublesome. He should be permitted to drink wine on Sunday, as this is not stated, we can infer that boundaries do not apply above a height of ten palms. For if boundaries did apply, he should be permitted to drink wine on Sunday, as Elijah should, could not arrive on the Sabbath. The Tana is in doubt as to whether boundaries apply and goes to the stricter side. When did this person take his vow to be a Nazarite? And if it was a weekday, then once he became a Nazarite, how could the Sabbath exempt him? So he must have vowed on the Sabbath itself or on the festival so that the day he is permitted to drink wine, but from then on he is forbidden, the absent-minded disciple. Okay, so now we're going to move on to a new topic. So at any rate, th this is this is lovely kind of almost nearly agotic passage that we've got in Talmud. But you, you can kind of follow the logic from one to the next. Do, the, the underlying bottom line question is, do we have Sabbath boundaries above the ground, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't a day and an era when there were no air travel other than Tevins and Elijah. So they invoke those to have this discussion, right? They bring those in just to have this discussion, and then they're on to a new topic, and so they leave. And this is the exact reason why in the early days of and on, and on radio, there are so many Jewish comedians because no one else would believe this stuff. <laughs> Maybe there's that. You know, it, it, and it, it's a wonderful topic, wonderful, you know, kind of fabulous topic. And we're going to end here. Um, we'll, we'll pick up on one occasion they did not enter port until dark. So we haven't come to our conclusion yet. Um, and we'll, we'll wait till next time to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Just before Shabbat.